welcome back everyone so today i have a very special video for you guys today i have my friend mario's car he's actually here with me behind the camera uh today's a really hot day so excuse me for looking all like a mess but i'm gonna show you guys around the, this truck all right so this is mario the infamous mario if you guys have been following me i've mentioned him a couple times uh he's helped me out with my truck a lot and uh, we actually have the same forerunner style second gen and today we're gonna review his car, his truck, and uh, see what's different from his setup versus mine, and uh, just give a quick walk around on his truck. So this is Mario, say what's up Mario. What's up you guys, wanna tell thanks to my homeboy Leo right here, having me on his channel, and again, if you aren't following him now, follow him, he's got really cool content coming up. Uh, definitely a lot more for his truck, for my truck, and it's just really about second gen than his first gen. And so we got a lot of good stuff probably coming up in the near future. And definitely leave any comments if you guys have any ideas but without any further ado let's get started on my car so as how he said it's a second generation forerunner it's 1993 model year and i'm uh well, it's green obviously <laughs> but i'm uh i've done a couple of things from it i'm uh under the hood it's the infamous 3.0 with the head gasket issue 3.03 vz um uh, i could say that i've had really good luck with this engine uh, once I've had to replace both head gaskets, it was actually the passenger side bank that went out. It started leaking from the side, which made me believe it was a water pump issue until eventually water eventually got into the cylinder chamber. I was all kinds of misfire, almost detonated the engine, but luckily I arrived at work on time, turned her off, and uh, she you know, was able to get her done right there. Perfect. So um, uh, that's probably the main reason I'm not going to show the hood. It's not pretty under there, but I mean, hey. It's almost a 30 year old car. <laughs> but um, uh, cosmetically, I have done some, I guess, improvements, you would say. Uh, the rims are from the. These are from the FJ Cruiser, right? That's correct, yeah, from the FJ Cruiser. I believe the Trail Teams uh, edition, special edition FJ Cruiser came on them. They're 16 inch. Uh, I believe they're negative 10 offset and um, uh, they fit just perfectly. So if you're looking on buying these rims, I'm thinking if they fit the old school style hub of the older Toyotas like found in the Land Cruiser, some of the first gen or second gen forerunners, maybe some third gen Tacomas and third gen foreigners. sorry about that, it's hot day, <laughs> but third gen Tacomas or third gen foreigners that also have manual hooks, they do fit them. And uh, in this case, we did have to modify them right here in the inner hub part of the rim. We got a sawmill, or I believe it's, I forgot the name of it, but we had to shave down an inner part that holds on to the hubcap. That hubcap you can see on the background that says PRD. And there is a way to avoid that by simply getting spacers, ball joint spacers. That way you're able to clear wheel spacers and ball joint spacers, sorry. But um, uh, me and him were in a rush that day, but we were able to get them on at least. Uh, tires, you can see they're BF Goodrich, all-terrain TAK 2s And What size are they? I'm, uh, I'm running 285, 75, 16s LT, and I have no complaints about them. I believe they're almost equivalent to 33s, so if you're looking on 33s, they'll fit almost the stock suspension, and I'm going to get to that in a few, but I'm, uh, I have no rubbing issue. I'm a uh, great tire uh, footprint, and they're just quiet on the road. I guess what I'm going for is not an ultimate off-roader but something that I'm able to daily take four or 500 miles down the road, get to my campsite, and even get to some life off-roading because they're older vehicles, but I do cherish this. So uh, what kind of suspension are you running on the truck? So on the suspension, I'm uh, kind of regular big box brand, KYB Model Max. Uh, I went with KYB because I've never had any battle with them. I, I, ha I have them on a Celica Supra that I have. I'll probably show that in a future video, so stay tuned for that. It's 85 Celica Supra, but I didn't have any complaints on that one until I switched to coilovers. So I thought I might as well just get something with a good price range and that has a good reputation and still a good ride quality. So it's KYB Mono Max in the front that are for the upgraded suspension. I'm sorry, the uh, one or two inch lift suspension. Um, uh, I plan on getting the torsion bars in the front, the sway away torsion bars like the old man emu. Them. And uh, for the back, currently I'm running the same shocks, KYB Monomaxes. But from the previous owner, 
I believe the the KYBs actually don't have a, a two inch lift in the in the, the rear, rear, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the they don't. KYBs don't have a two inch rear in the lift. But later on, I will upgrade to that. Same thing, probably the old man MUs. But they do a good job. They're not bouncy. They do quite a bit of good shock absorbing. And if you can see in the video right there too, the airbags. Those yeah. uh, those are actually airbags. There's no spring with them. They're manually operated, which means you get I get to set my own prep. Uh, certain air pressure yeah because usually these come with like coil springs in the rear yeah these typically get the mom sack <laughs> like mine right up back over there yeah, like his, but um, uh, i think we already bought the uh, springs we just need to install them you know, we've been both been very busy so we're really waiting for that day you know but aside from that the previous owner had installed these and he forgot what brand they were and i did a lot of research and what i found what closely resembled to it are Firestone Air Riders, I believe, from Max Air. And so they use almost like a semi-truck type of airbag suspension system in the back that you get a manual to set it up and down. And I, I've, so far I haven't had any complaints about it. One actual real complaint is that at certain PSIs higher, like around anywhere above 40 to 50, it does get more bouncy. But obviously because the system is more pressurized, etc. But anyways, other than that, no real complaints. But that's the closest thing that I found to at least that suspension I have in the back there, the Firestone Air Max. I don't remember the full name, but the Firestone. Cool. <laughs> Alright, so Mario, let us know. These tail lights, I believe, aren't original to, to the US spec, right? That's correct. These are actually from, I believe, the Australian spec and the Japanese spec Hilux Surf SSRX, I believe. And uh, I originally got them because when we installed the tire carrier, I still had the original door. And uh, off camera, Lee and I also <laughs> pointed out why I have a black door. And long story short, I got in a collision. Um, uh, insurance wasn't helping me out, so I just found out my own way. Found a door that luckily did have the tire carrier factory. And uh, we installed it. So I believe. The tire carrier only comes in the 90s trucks, right? They're like really really limited to the 90s truck and you said yours was a 93? Correct, yeah, 90-91. That's when they that's when they came stock as an option, I'm sorry. As an option, you could either have it as an under tire carrier or the under the top carrier right yeah. here. So you retrofitted into the truck? I retrofitted it, yeah. Um, uh, I used some thicker, I believe grade 8 bolts with thick washers just because it doesn't have that extra support panel that the uh, ones with the actual tire carrier came on and I didn't want to deal with cutting this whole area open welding that in more easier to use actual thicker washers that would get the job done probably even better than that factory stuff anyways moving forward uh, yeah the, these are from the Hilux Surf's Jap Japanese spec and Australian spec and um, uh, I had them on because with the original door they didn't have the reverse lights and so I thought that it was a cool little nifty from a different type of uh, Hilux Surf board. So kind of like mine, if you guys see right over there, mines actually don't have the reverse light. So this was kind of like his setup, how we have it on mine, where we retrofitted tire carrier and those light, those rear license, uh, those rear reverse lights don't show. So that's something pretty cool. <laughs> uh, tell us about your 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 basket on top. What uh, what brand is it? Or so you're right. It is a roof basket, roof rack, uh, kind of hybrid pull. Uh, it's pretty, I, I've used it quite a bit of times and how Leo said the brand is actually Crossfab. You can see the name right here on the side. Crossfab. And I've done so much Google research, nothing has came up. I'm, uh, I'm assuming it was probably a small company that made it. But uh, yeah, CT3 might be the model of this specific roof basket. But um, uh, it's definitely helped me out a lot, especially because of the type that it is. With kind of like a steel mesh underneath. That steel mesh really does come in handy when you have bungee cords or strapping your ice cooler up there or even moving right there. That's <laughs> one of actually the recent things I had to do. My girlfriend was doing some stuff, storage, whatnot. And um, uh, these bungee cords really did or the steel mesh really came in handy with the bungee cords. So I've liked the wind noise, there's little to none. But um, if you do find one, if you do find one, then you're one of the lucky few that was able to find it. It's, it's hard to find. And um, uh, so let's go on and move on forward. 
So we're back in the front. Uh, tell us about your lights right here in the front and the and the bumper. So these lights actually came attached when I bought the uh, front brush guard. Uh, I believe the brand there are Michelotti. Michelotti, I don't know how to pronounce that. If someone's there knowing this brand, say it in the comments if I'm saying it right or not. But um, uh, it says made in Japan. They're pretty cool. I wired them up to my aux beam. We'll go to that in a second. And um, I like it that they're not too bright. They're not too dim. They're actually more of, uh, I guess, fog slash driving lights, DRLs. But um, uh, I like the fact that they have these little uh, functional covers for when I don't have them on to protect the lights. But this one, unfortunately, was already cracked by the time I started using it. Or, sorry, let me rephrase that, by the time I actually bought it. And the brush guard, uh, it's for this specific model. The uh, name of it's called Manic 4x4. I believe it's a fabrication shop. I'm trying to do some research on it again. But I think there was a small company based off back then in the 90s that probably don't exist anymore. But if they are, hey, cool, give us a shout out. <laughs> but um, uh, I like it because it's not too of an aggressive bumper. Again, how I said in the beginning of the video, I'm not really going for an aggressive off-road or something that I could still take down the highway that's comfortable and not loud. And it gives me that um, uh, 4x4 advantage that I can still have. And uh, also clear lenses, eBay, kind of easy, 20 bucks. <laughs> On that's a pretty well, first mod right you know because yeah. usually they come with the orange one orange one yeah i believe because it matched uh, i liked it because it matched with the actual lenses so i believe you could also buy like the corner lights that are clear completely also clear lights that are clear yeah i, I think I, it's a pretty cool setup yeah, to be honest I, with you i do kind of like the amber on the side um uh, i guess that's just me but different takes but now we're going to go inside and show you the oxygen that powers this so as you guys can see, we uh, Mario actually has the aux beam uh, panel switch, I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, the aux beam switch. So it's really cool. Um, I got the six angle one. It was more economical. I don't really run, plan on running an excess amount of lights and just, I believe, just the right amount for what I'm trying to run. But uh, Leo had pointed out earlier too, off camera, that there's some missing stickers on it. I don't think one is placed on it. It looks funny <laughs> at the moment. But um, uh, the reason why one of them is on is to power those lights on the brush guard. But the top three I'm saving for uh, possibly an ARB compressor or something of that same nature. And uh, air lockers for the bottom. Because even though if I don't do that much off-roading, I have seen some instances where I got stuck in mud. Sometimes the max track helps do work. And you get stuck again right after passing them. <laughs> but um, uh, I don't have them with me right now. Waste of space, I guess. But I'm... Uh, I do plan on saving those three top levels and there's little blank stickers to cover them that way they're not uh it doesn't just look like that all missing stuff <laughs> yeah the other two i plan on probably uh, adding a light bar to the uh, roof basket and two little pots for the windshield so that's what i'm saving it for and again haven't done it because of time and i do need to fabricate some brackets that hold the light pod to the actual mounting bracket of the windshield so that's that's currently where I'm at right now. Sick. So Mario, I see that you almost have 300,000 miles on the odometer. Is that mileage correct on these trucks? That is correct. It's almost going to be your birthday. According to the previous owner and according to some of the Carfax reports that I did some research on, that mileage is accurate. And it's so it sucks because like these these trucks, this, these engines, the 3.0s, get so much hate that they don't last, that that's they great. blow heads. But to be honest with you, it's like they have what what they make up in what they what they don't make up in power they make up in re reliability and these are like really reliable once you know how to take care of them like they're super super reliable that's true i mean it's i believe it's almost like any engine you know you should always just do its proper maintenance take care of it and unfortunately it just suffers sometimes from that head gasket issue or it could be sometimes be from driver negligence um, uh, without doing their periodic coolant interval changes but um, uh, again, mine failed because it started having that leak near the water pump. I believe it was water pump. And then it started leaking into the cylinder chamber. And it was more than 10 years since it had it done. So 10 years for a head gasket does not sound bad. Because that's when the previous owner told me that it actually changed it when he first bought it 10 years ago. Because I bought this truck five years ago, and he said he bought it five years before that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, to me, I would say 10 years of service life is really good and within those 10 years I believe she got sorry I believe she got more than 60,000 or 80 90,000 
because he told me that he would take her to Colorado, Utah. She was really, really heavily driven for what she is, but she's never given me hit me with that. I myself have also taken to San Francisco, Sequoia, and uh, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. So what's the farthest you've actually taken this truck? Like, has she ever let you down in one of those trips that you've taken? The farthest I took it was to, I would say, San Francisco. And uh, just because it was nonstop, and aside from San Francisco, we also went a little bit up north past the Golden Gate Bridge. She never gave me a hiccup. And that's what I would do her constant. I did all her maintenance by then. I did her gear oil service from the diff transfer, uh, five speed uh, gearbox, and the front diff. <laughs> if you guys don't know, this is it also is a, five speed. a five speed and a four by four. <laughs> yeah, so it's awesome. And she never gave me a hiccup. Other than buying for gas, that was the only real expense that was there. Because gas is also an expense. But, um, no real hookup. So that's that's what I'm saying. I believe this second gen forerunner or the second gens in general forerunners, they are probably the underdogs. Of yeah. If 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 I could give any advice to anybody looking to buy a second gen, I would re definitely recommend getting a manual transmission. I believe a lot of people run into issues with the automatic transmission and the overheating on the transmissions on those. Uh, so yeah, I always go with the manual. <laughs> That's true. By now, um, uh, some of those automatic transmissions more than likely need a rebuild. So if you're looking for an economical off-roader, definitely the second gen is one of those that is very uh, unrecognized. Uh, again, like the underdog. And yeah, if you're lucky enough to find a 5-speed at a really good price, then I would say jump on it. It was proper maintenance. And if you even find it with the 20 Tori, even better. <laughs> I believe that's even better. But Oh, those are rare. Those are those unicorns. Are, those are unicorns out <laughs> in the second gen world. But, oh, yeah. Um, if you could get hands your hands on one that's 5-speed, at least a four door or a two door, I feel like for at least a decent off roader, it would definitely be it. Well, you guys, this is pretty much kind of like the walk around of Mario's truck. Thank you, Mario, for coming out and for like showing us your truck, uh, showing around your truck. Appreciate that. Oh, thanks for having me. And again, thanks, you guys. Um, uh, hopefully, you like it. Um, uh, let us know in the comments what you think about my car, what should we do next, or what would you like to see done to the some ideas also about anything else. But um, uh, thank you guys again and uh, long live second chance. <laughs> Later, guys. Bye.